I think it's fair to say that most folks have no idea how their credit report will affect their reverse mortgage financing. I have some clients come to me thinking they will be denied a reverse mortgage because they don't have great credit, and then some who think they will get better terms than normal because they have stellar credit. Well, I can tell you that neither is true. And that's why today we're going to be breaking down the role that your credit plays when getting a reverse mortgage. Very important aspect to reverse mortgage financing. So stick around because you'll want to make sure you understand this piece in its entirety. Hey folks, Taryn Proctor here, founder of Retirement Home Equity Advisors, a mortgage brokerage specializing exclusively in reverse mortgage financing. Thanks for stopping by to get your fill of reverse mortgage education for the week. If this is your first time with us and you or someone you know is considering a reverse mortgage, definitely like this video and head on over to our channel to subscribe. I put out in-depth reverse mortgage education typically once a week with the goal to help empower folks like yourself to better make well-informed decisions on whether a reverse mortgage is something that may be a good fit or not. Now back to credit and how that impacts a reverse mortgage. For starters, many of you may be surprised to learn that your credit score does not matter when it comes to the federally insured reverse mortgage. Further, if you have no credit, as in you literally have no score at all, and there's nothing when your credit is ran, this is actually considered satisfactory in the eyes of a reverse mortgage lender. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do have credit, your credit report does not matter. So let's take a couple steps back here and break this down in detail. I'm sure most of you watching are aware that reverse mortgages do not require you make a principal and interest payment on the money that you borrow from the mortgage itself. And if you have ever done a regular or traditional mortgage where a payment is required, then you know that when you go to get one, the lender is looking at your credit and your income to make sure you're capable of making that mortgage payment over time. So many people ask me, well, if you don't have a mortgage payment with a reverse mortgage, then what does credit or income have to do with it? So here's the answer. Even though you do not have a required mortgage payment, when you get a reverse mortgage, you will still be responsible to pay your property charges. So property taxes, homeowners insurance, HOA dues, if you have them, things like that. And because you still have that financial responsibility, the lender is required to look at things like your credit report, income, and property charge payment history to make sure it's likely you'll have the ability to keep up with those financial obligations. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the reverse mortgage provides for a sustainable solution over the long term for you. So when it comes to your credit, even though your score makes no difference, what lenders will be looking at is your payment history on the credit report. They wanna make sure that you have a habit, for the most part, of making your payments on time. Now, luckily, they don't expect you to be perfect here. The federal government has given some leeway as far as understanding that sometimes stuff happens in life that causes finances to take a back seat. So if you have a couple scuff marks on credit, that is totally fine. But if we start getting into a situation where your payment history on credit or your property charge payment history is pretty rough, then we're going to have to go in a bit of a different direction. But you still won't be denied a reverse mortgage in most cases. Now, if you had a rough patch in payments that was caused by what we call an extenuating circumstance that we can prove, then all is well and we can continue to move forward. An extenuating circumstance is something provable that we can point to that either caused a loss of income or an increase in financial responsibility for you. So cause of a loss of income would be something like a divorce or maybe the death of a spouse or loss of a job. 
and the cause for increase in financial responsibility would be something like unforeseen medical expenses, uh, home repairs, things like that. Extenuating circumstances are basically saying, listen, normally I'm responsible when it comes to my finances. Unfortunately, this understandable thing or things happened to cause my finances to take a back seat for a period of time. Now, folks, I, I cannot stress enough that this aspect of a reverse mortgage is one of many reasons why you want to make sure that if you decide a reverse mortgage may be a good fit for you, that you work with someone with the experience and expertise to help navigate you properly through this process. As well, if you do wind up feeling like a reverse mortgage is something you may want to explore further, please don't start disqualifying yourself if you have some credit issues. Have a professional, someone like myself, evaluate your situation and make that determination. Because let's say you don't have an extenuating circumstance and your payment history on credit is awful. You still, in most cases, will not be denied a reverse mortgage. When it comes to evaluating your credit, payment history, and income, we call this process the financial assessment. It is a pass or fail assessment. If you wind up failing for one reason or another, again, the reverse mortgage in most cases will not simply just get denied. What will happen is something called a life expectancy set aside will be required. Remember, the only reason we are looking at your financial assessment in the first place is to make sure that you are willing and able to keep up with your property charge payments. So if you fail the financial assessment, that's effectively saying that you being willing and able to keep up with those financial obligations is at risk. And the life expectancy set aside is the way that the lender eliminates that risk while still being able to give you the loan. Now, the life expectancy set aside is where a lender will be required to set aside enough money out of your reverse mortgage proceeds to pay your taxes and your insurance on your behalf for an amount of years equal to your statistical life expectancy. More simply put, they are going to set aside a chunk of your reverse mortgage loan to pay your taxes and insurance every year when they become due for many years to come. The younger you are, the more money they will wanna set aside because your life expectancy is longer than someone who is older. Now, whether or not this set aside will be required is something that needs to be determined upfront because although the lender won't flat out deny the loan and will just require the set aside, that set aside will completely change the way your loan looks and in some instances may make the loan no longer feasible or palatable for you. Again, this is why you want to make sure you are working with someone who has the experience with this financial product to make sure that they're advising you properly. So that's it for today, folks. If you have any questions about how your credit may impact a reverse mortgage for you, or if you have any questions about reverse mortgages at all, please feel free to comment below or give me a call anytime. I'm always happy to break everything down for you one-on-one -on -one and help get you to a point where you are confident in determining whether a reverse mortgage is a good solution for you and your family or not. You can give me a call at 888-982-0475. And if you're still watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've learned a thing or two today and subscribe to the channel for more educational content every week. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you soon.